Hello, it's Michael from Ancient Greece Revisited. Recently, I had the pleasure of being interviewed by Thaddeus Russell in his great podcast called Unregistered. Um, many people that I respect have been there, like Michael Millerman, who I consider teacher and friend, and I was very honored of uh, receiving an invitation. And we talked about a lot, a lot of things. The podcast ended up being much more biographical than I expected it, uh, which was fine by me. Um, so if you want to learn more about me personally and my life, you can watch it uh, to its full. But I also felt there was too much there. And uh, with his permission, we decided to just clip a part that I consider very significant, which was near the end. So it was only for the very, very faithful listeners of both uh, our work and his work, and just presented as a standalone piece on our channel, Ancient Greece Revisited. And so the reason why it was important is because it talks about a philosopher that has influenced us. His name is Cornelius Castoriadis. We have a whole interview uh, with an expert on the man. Obviously, links below to both Thaddeus' podcast and the interview about Cornelius Castoriadis. And I think that I just came up with an example of explaining this man's theories, which can be very daunting. At first, things like the radical imaginary and uh, how images that will underlie every culture are irreducible by science. And a lot of these things might be a little hard to grasp, but I think I came up with, uh, with a good example, although literally a very tragic one. So I want to present you with this last clip from the Unregistered podcast for your enjoyment. And I can always tell you that Castoriadis is very much in our mind and we are going to be doing more material on him, his philosophy and incorporating a lot of his work in our work. As always, I want to thank everyone watching, everyone subscribing and remind everyone that we do count on your support. So if you feel so, please visit our Patreon, um, subscribe, like, share. We have a Facebook page and uh, we have this channel. That's our, 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 our life's work. So thank you very much and it, please enjoy this uh, conversation about Cornelius Castoriadis on The Unregistered. You know, when the Spartans died heroically, um, it's, it has to be noticed that every other culture would have um, um, dedicated this action to a god or to a higher spirit, to a higher authority. Mm. Um, there is a plague, there is a plague that, there's a poem essentially that was written after the 300s uh, died. Um, and very much like these poems, it was written as if it was spoken by Spartan, okay? As if it was spoken by King Leonidas himself. And mm -hmm. it was, uh, a, it became a monument, it was placed uh, near that battle site uh, where the 300 side and it reads it's just four lines it says uh, it talks to the stranger who's passing by the the wanderer who's passing by Thermopylae he says oh stranger tell the Spartans that here we lie obeying our common laws mm. okay hmm. so you have this idea of the law okay which is not legalistic Okay, what is it exactly? So, um, well, the word itself, if you trace it very, very back, some would even say to its Indo-European roots, it has something to do with dividing, dividing up the land. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is a very big, big word. Now, where I draw my inspiration on this, Besides Strauss, besides Dugin, besides Michael Milderman, I've been very, very influenced by a philosopher called Cornelius Castoriadis. Yes. Uh, yes. Who's relatively un he's unknown enough to be worth to carry his torch forward. Yes. Okay? And he believed something called the radical imaginary. Yes. Okay. It's a big concept, but essentially what he says is that if you keep doing what you just did, you know, keep 
peeling out the layers of, of, of culture. You say the most, you say, Michael, the postmodernists did it wrong for you. So let's go back. The modernists, they did it wrong for you. The, the ancients, they didn't give us. So if you keep peeling the layers of your culture, Castoriadis said that you reach a, a core of images which are not uh, decomposable. Um, at the core of each culture, he used the word images. It, again, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not like um, uh, pictorial representations of something, you mm -hmm. know, they're mm -hmm. images like dream images or like psychedelic images where a flower can contain a hundred things in one. Um, and he believed that each culture had a different image and all the higher structures, the morality, the why you should not kill, they're essentially like a superstructure on top of that. Okay, so at the basis, basis, basis of society, there's this what I call post rationality. It's not irrational actively that it goes against reason. It's just a set of primal images different for each culture. Okay, right. and to conclude this train of thought, Castoriadis believed that the Greek imaginary was actually spoken once uh, by a man called Anaximandros. Okay, yeah. who he has one remaining fragment, uh, and it's his only remaining fragment. And we're told that he's the second philosopher in history. Thales, his teacher, was the first philosopher ever, and he's the second philosopher. He's like Saint Paul, you know, for uh, not Saint Paul because he never met Jesus. Peter, for uh, mm -hmm. for, for for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's very, it's a strange one. It's very uh, heavy and, and compact. And, and Heidegger wrote books on it, but it goes like this. It talks about beings, beings, whatever you know. And he says, Anaximandro says, uh, before Plato, before Socrates, before Heraclitus, way back when Greece was born, he said, from where they come, there they must return. Hmm. Because beings, inflict upon each other just punishment for the injustice they have done against the order of time. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what, how Castoriadis translated it is that at the root of the Greek imaginary, the radical imaginary, you don't have morality, you don't have thou shall not kill. You have a very strange notion unique to Greece, so that goes against this perennialism, this old religion said the same, all cultures get the same, which I don't believe. The Greek said, being is somehow unjust, is an act of, of, of robbery against non-existence. Existence is a fault, somehow, it's a mistake. Non-existence is the default, it's, it's, it's the standard. Existence has to rob its being from non-existence. Okay, somehow. What that means, and that's where I'm trying to go with my understanding of ancient Greece, and it goes against both the traditional classicist, white kind of fairy tale version of Greece, and the Michael Millerman Strauss Dugin version. What Castoriadis essentially, the best way that I can translate it is this. It's going to sound very controversial and very bad, but here it goes. You know Michael Schumacher, the great Formula One driver. Oh, yeah. Perhaps mm -hmm. greatest mm -hmm. has ever lived. And you know his fate, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, had this great career, uh, retired at the top of his career. Uh, a couple of years later, he goes on ski vacation, slips on a stone, breaks his head, remains paralyzed for the rest of his life. Uh, in a kind of vegetative state. Okay. If you can see that and say there is justice there, then you will approach the ancient Greeks. It's not morality. It's not justice in the court sense. If someone were to do this to him, he should have gone to jail for sure, mm -hmm. um, for life. Mm -hmm. But you see, for the ancient Greeks, and that's the perspective that I'm trying to give against the Straussians, against the Dukenites, it's unique. And Castoriadis has taught me, you know, for the Greeks, someone like Schumacher, you see, he stole too much speed from the order of time. Oh. It was too fast. Oh. And now he has to pay. Oh. And be the slowest. 
he has to drag himself to the bathroom. Is this good? No. Is this bad? Neither. What is it? It's tragic. The Greeks gave us words to describe it for the first time. It's tragic. That is tragedy. Okay. So Kasnoriadis believe that cultures are born like galaxies are born, like, like in the Big Bang. You know, they go out. Um, we talked about science. Science says they can explain everything, um, everything about the universe uh, five, four milliseconds after the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, we talked about Terence McKenna, the great mm -hmm. psychonaut, and he said, responding to that, that's like saying, give us a free miracle and we'll explain everything. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. It's a lot to be able to explain everything that happened four milliseconds after being back. But what happened four milliseconds before? It's not that modern science has not reached that point. Is that it cannot reach that point? It can't. Because if, right. if during the Big Bang, time and space itself were created, that's right. And science works within the categories of time and space. It cannot work out how it all began. Yeah. We cannot work out how it all began. Castoriadis believe that cultures are born. They're not developed, and they're born like galaxies in a big bang in a set of images hmm. and they're different for the jews they're different for the greeks they're different capitalism has its imaginary um, um communism has its imaginary you have great communists like george sorel who talked about something very similar about the radical images of communism you know so it's not just castoriadis but the, the 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 reason why these people have not become mainstream is that they go against the scientific mindset because mm -hmm. they give you truths that are irreducible you cannot reduce these images further what is it for the jews i don't know but the more i read their literature the more i find the image of the father sacrificing his son you know it's abraham and, and isaac it's god and jesus you know it's god and the people of israel the word they use in the bible translates to holocaust there's something there in that radical image that keeps repeating in their history almost like cultures are not progressing they're orbiting a central point a, a, they're orbiting the moment of their birth somehow and without going too far into it for castoriadis that greek star that gravitational field around which the whole of greek culture uh, 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 rotates is captured in these verses of Anaximander. And I just gave you this horrible image of Schumacher because I think it's a very modern, tangible approach. Okay. Um, so that doesn't sound like morality. No, right? but there is okay. a morality. If there is, for the Greeks, there was no morality ingrained in the universe. Right. The idea that there's morality in the universe is, 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 is a Middle Eastern, is a Jewish idea. For the Greeks, there is no morality. You cannot look for morals in the Greek myths. I'm sure that Jordan Peterson has tried. It's 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 a very naive. It's a very simplistic. Path. Yeah, there's no right. They're not making claims that are absolute and universal, right? They're not about about morality, right? They're not making claims about that something will be good or bad for all time and in all places. No, oh, but why? Because at the center of the universe, there's no morality. There is law. Oh, okay. There is law, oh. which means division. As things divide, there is a law. As things divide, as beings come into existence, they have to punish, eat up each other, go to war. That's why nations will always go to war, according to the Greeks. Cities, it was said again and again, Aristotle, Plato, cities by their nature, they said. Wow. Not by circumstance by their nature. So cities are beings, they have a nature, and they have to eat up each other, punish each other for their injustices. One way to read Pericles' funeral oration is like a tragedy, it's like a tragic play. It has been done. Um, and, and who's the main character? It's Athens itself, who's like Schumacher, he's been, it's been punished for its greatness. Wow. It was too good to exist. 